Hi, I'm Dr. Rudy Cashman. I'm the medical wellness director now at uh, Lufen Hospital um, Network. This show is going to be very interesting today. It'll be on gluten and uh, wheat. This is mainly my opinion based on uh, uh, other books, of course, but you'll find this very fascinating uh, show. Uh, and uh, uh, give us our daily bread. <laughs> but I'll tell you, the bread has changed. The bread has changed. Uh, so we need to re kind of reevaluate this a little bit. What type of bread are uh, we eating? You know, the bread they were eating, uh, say, the Mediterranean diet, for example, Ansel Keys, uh, say in the 1940s, 50s or so, that bread weighed five pounds. <laughs> five pounds. It had a lot more nutrients. So we're speaking about different bread. Uh, and that. Uh, and what is gluten? What is gluten? Uh, gluten is a protein. That's a protein uh, in uh, wheat. Uh, wheat, for example, uh, is only 10 to 15 percent uh, protein. 70 uh, percent is a, a carbohydrate, and it's just a, essentially a, a no, no uh, fat in it. And the protein is made of many complex uh, amino acids. Uh, and uh, and, and these proteins have funny names, gliadin, uh, for example, is one of them. There are many types of protein, but the main one is uh, gliadin. Uh, and uh, what is it found in? It's not just found in, in wheat, but wheat is sort of 100 to 1 uh, of the grains that we're eating. But what are the other grains? Uh, barley, rye, comma, spelt, uh, bulgur. Uh, in some countries, eat more of that than others, but uh, uh, wheat is... It's, it's about 100 to 1 as to what we're eating, and, and it's the uh, gluten in there that's causing us a problem, and we'll explain that further. Let me give you a little bit of a history of wheat. Uh, this is fascinating. It's totally fascinating. Wheat used to be, 100,000 years ago, 4 feet tall. 4 feet tall. It was called einkorn. Einkorn. And then through hybridization, a lot of it just by accident, uh, it only had 12 chromosomes, uh, and it uh, then be, uh, became Emma. It's called Emma wheat, and they, they've, uh, through archaeology, they, you know, they found some uh, specimens of it. And, and uh, even today, you can uh, actually on a website uh, get some einkorn yourself. I know I looked; it was five pounds worth, thirty bucks, and grow it yourself. It's totally different genetically than today. So it was einkorn, then it was called Emma, and then it was called triticum. Now we have many varieties of, uh, of triticum, uh, and in 1948, this is just fascinating, after the uh, Second World War, the world was starving. The world was starving, and we needed to do something. So the Rockefeller Institute opened an institute out east of Mexico City. Uh, it was called the Institute of Maize and Corn, uh, and and they had two seasons there, and that's the reason they picked that area, so they could uh, grow a lot more uh, and do a lot more experimenting. Uh, and uh, a uh, doctor, uh, Borglau, B-O-R-G-L-A-U-G-H, uh, ended up getting the Nobel Prize of Medicine, the Presidential Medal. Uh, he genetically modified the wheat to the point, instead of four feet tall, now it's 18 inches to two feet tall. Yeah, it's totally changed. They never tested it on humans, uh, but because it was shorter, the, the stock was much stronger, uh, and the yield was increased tremendously. See, the old four-foot plants used to fall over with the wind if it was a good yield because it's just too tall. A and this was then sent all over the world. China, where a lot of people were starving, Asia, uh, and, and they all, uh, it was a revolution. He was called the father of the Green Revolution. He was the founder of the Green Revolution. You see the point, but it was never genetically tested. But you, you could see the need at that time. Uh, and then what happened, uh, our bodies hadn't changed through evolution. We, we started growing wheat and domesticating animals 10,000 years ago, but our evolutionary bodies don't change but 0.00. .00 four or five every 20,000 years. Our bodies aren't used to this, this type of food. Uh, and uh, and, and uh, uh, it resulted in uh, trouble. Uh, in the Roman times, uh, they uh, were able 
to learn about leveling of, of, of bread, and they added yeast to it, and, and sort of bread was born at, the, at that time. Uh, uh, and, but even as I said, even as late as 1940s and 50s, bread, a loaf of bread weighed about five pounds. But now it's been so genetically modified, you take some Wonder Bread, some white bread, I mean, you can just <laughs> bounce it in a room like a ball. I mean, it's uh, totally, totally uh, uh, different. What about the proteins uh, in, in wheat? Uh, what's happened is our bodies uh, react to them, uh, and that really is the problem. And the protein in it uh, actually has in it about five uh, uh, ex-orphans. We call them ex-orphans. Our, our own narcotics are called endorphins, but because we're eating it, uh, and about five uh, uh, chemicals in there that act like a narcotic, they hit, they hit our narcotic receptor sites, in the brain, the nucleus accumbens, uh, where uh, uh, if, if a chemical hits, it makes us feel great. I mean, cocaine will do it. Sugar will do it, yes. Sugar will do it. But also, will the proteins of a wheat do it? And there's about five proteins from wheat that have a morphine-like effect. That's why a lot of times they say, well, I need some comfort food. It's that morphine effect from the proteins of wheat that are doing to us. Could it be addicting to us? Yes, yes. A lot of people are addicted to their food. It hits the dopamine circuitry, which you can, you can hit uh, with narcotics, with alcohol, with sugar, with, with the uh, proteins uh, from wheat, for example, gambling. Uh, same circuitry, alcohol, cigarettes, same circuitry. You can take sugar and fat and the proteins uh, from wheat and, and uh, experiment on a person uh, with MR, MRI scans, functional scans. The brain will just light up with these substances in the dopamine circuitry. Isn't that very interesting? And, uh, and the wheat is a source of a great deal of belly fat today. Uh, and a man, and I'm going to refer to two books today, and, and I'd like you to read them sometime if you need more information. I think you will if you have, for example, celiac disease, where we're speaking about. One is uh, William Davis' uh, Wheat Belly. I think it's a very good book. I, I, in the end, I don't totally agree with what he recommends to eat, but the discussion on wheat in here is excellent, excellent. And the history I was telling you came out of that book. Here's another one, Dangerous Grains by James Braley, MD. Uh, very good. Uh, a discussion uh, of uh, what I'm speaking about today for extra reading. There are other books too, but and, and websites, but these are uh, very good. Remember, I told you about the effect uh, of of glutens on on our brain. You know, we we've heard of pretzel brain, <laughs> bagel brain, wheat belly. Uh, these uh, proteins actually uh, uh, do that. But what is it about wheat? Uh, uh, it's really hitting us two ways. The proteins are affecting us, but also in the carbohydrates. Uh, uh, remember I spoke about that, it's about a good 85% uh, carbohydrate. It is in it, amylopectin A, that's a complex carbohydrate which hits the blood system and increases the blood sugar quickly, tremendously. Although it's a complex carbohydrate wheat, uh, even with its coverings on the bran on it, you know, we have the bran, the coverings of wheat, the inside is called the endosperm, and a little area called the germ where the re reproduction uh, part is. Uh, it, it, this amylopectin A, which is 75% of wheat, will rapidly rise the blood sugar very quickly, uh, uh, almost like processed food almost like white bread. Yeah, people think it's, it, it's delayed, no. So when it goes to the liver, uh, it's made into uh, fat uh, uh, and is uh, dangerous to us. The other part of the uh, uh, endosperm of the wheat uh, is amylase, that's about 25%, uh, which is largely goes out in the stool. It's so complex, it's not, not absorbed. Uh, but the wheat causes a rapid rise of uh, insulin uh, uh, and uh, uh, and it triggers uh, fatty deposits uh, in the, in the uh, liver, for example. A lot of people, uh, the, the, the big belly we talked about, for example, the book Wheat Belly, what we're speaking about here is this fat is largely not under the skin. You know where it's at? 
in your liver, in your pancreas, in your bowel, in some is even in your heart. If you got a, a big time pot belly, uh, good chance that you have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Most people with this are undiagnosed. That's the reason I want you eventually to get your biometrics, your blood test, that's your biometrics. Some people even uh, need a DEXA scan or an MRI scan or an ultrasound see how much fat you get in your liver because it's very dangerous. The, f the fat sitting in the liver uh, has a lot of cytokines. Fat isn't just something that sits on you. It's like a gland. Uh, it makes about 20 nasty chemicals from cancer factors, from dementia factors, from uh, increase in the inflammation of your vasculature. Uh, and and it, fat in the liver is very uh, dangerous. Uh, and, and the fat on the wheat belly uh, generally is in your organs. A lot of people don't uh, uh, realize that. Every organ affects every organ, including your heart. Uh, and uh, let me tell you a minute about the glycemic index, just to give us some idea how rapidly the blood sugar rises. It's very important uh, because, because insulin is not your friend. It causes arthritis, it causes cancer, it causes uh, deposits of fat. Uh, it's needed, to, uh, of, course to, to, of course, to take sugar into the cell for energy, to make energy, ATP. No question, we need it, but a very high level is very uh, dangerous to our health. For example, the increased sugar will combine with protein and that pro those called ages that are deposited all over your body. They cause dementia, they cause arthritis, they cause cancer, they, they cause premature aging. So high sugars is not something that you want. But the glycemic index is where you swallow uh, a food, not meat, a, a, a vegetable, or sugary substance, whatever, and we, we judge the rate it increases the blood sugar. Like white bread is 100 points, okay? A bean would be 30. So you want to eat 50 or under on the glycemic index. You can find the glycemic index on glycemicindex.com on your computer. You can get up. Now, this is interesting. Wheat has a glycemic index of 72, of 72. Table sugar, which is half glucose, half fructose, okay, uh, is 59. Yeah, wheat is higher. The insulin response is much higher uh, to wheat, uh, and, uh, uh, in, in, in that can cause a lot of uh, disease, for example, like type 2 diabetes. Now remember, this is a no-judgment zone, okay? If you got a pot belly, if you're overweight, uh, we're not making any judgment here. Uh, we're just discussing to try to make you uh, well. I, I like it like a, a planet fitness, a no-judgment zone. We just, I'm just trying to get you well, trying to educate you. And uh, so what went wrong here? What went, what went wrong? Well, uh, the geneticists are uh, constantly changing uh, the gene structure of our plants so they resist herbicides, uh, so they uh, insecticides, so they uh, can grow in any season uh, to, to see that they can grow in, in cold weather and in warm weather uh, and uh, so they don't die from fungicides and bacteria and viruses. Constantly genetic changes, the only darn trouble is they don't ever uh, check it on our, uh, in, in, in humans, uh, how it affects us. Our bodies don't change much. We are seeing a new genetic structure and it's revolting, causing uh, uh, diseases. Uh, and, uh, and constantly, as you, they hybridize and constantly genetically change. It's done by the food companies. ConAgra, for example, and many different food companies uh, study these things uh, constantly uh, uh, because they're trying to improve the sales. You can see their point, but it's killing us. So you get to see our point in our U.S. Department of Agriculture. Uh, they don't protect us, and I, I, I'll show you why in a little while. They protect us very little, including the Food and Drug Administration. They don't test these extensively, uh, uh, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's dangerous. So they're switching genes, they're hybridized, and, and ev they even have patents now to these plants where uh, uh, their information on these plants are, are secret. So it's difficult for us to study them. So the modern triticum, remember we talked about einkorn, 
Emma triticum uh, wheat. Uh, it's about 70% carbohydrate, 50% protein, but the proteins are changing. The original uh, Emma uh, uh, wheat, for example, was 28% protein, but it's proteins we were used to, okay? Uh, and uh, so a couple of things uh, went wrong here. The gluten in, in the wheat was changed, uh, constantly changed, and our bodies are not used to this in reacting to it. When the wheat hits your bowel, the mucosa of your bowel is only one cell layer thick, okay? And guess what lays right under that one cell layer of mucosa? Your immune system. There's a huge immune system in your bowel. Huge immune system in your bowel. We have almost 22 feet of gut. And, and, and so it's very easy for that immune system to react. When people eat uh, a lot of gluten f uh, foods, uh, uh, there is an enzyme, there is an enzyme that is much more prevalent, and we'll discuss it in more detail, that much more prevalent, uh, which opens uh, uh, the cell layers be between these cells and allows the proteins in. It's supposed to normally let in the, the vitamins and the minerals, uh, but uh, when you eat a lot of uh, wheat uh, products, uh, uh, or have celiac disease, which we'll talk about, so there are a lot more of these holes, and, and the proteins come in, and your immune system, whose job it is to fight viruses and bacteria and foreign invaders and foreign substances, causes a tremendous reaction. It flames the bowel, the villi, which are uh, the mucosal surfaces, uh, uh, a football field, we're from mucosal surfaces in each human being, a football field, uh, reacts to it. It gets inflamed, the pores get bigger, the villi flatten out, become shorter, so the absorptive surface is not as big, uh, and the holes are bigger. Uh, and uh, besides, the reaction of the gut uh, on these uh, pro proteins, uh, and remember, the carbohydrate part of the wheat, the amylopectin, uh, uh, gets into the bloodstream and, and, and uh, the insulin uh, reacts to it and it goes to the liver uh, and uh, uh, converts it to l low density LDL, bad fat, which causes vas vascular disease. So it's a, a double whammy here. Uh, frankly, it's an A bomb and a gluten bomb. And uh, 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 two slices of wheat bread, incidentally, it's like drinking a a sugary soda pop. Wow, wow. What a, uh, we realize that 50% of obesity is due to soda pops. 50% of obesity is due to sugary drinks. It's due to sugary uh, drinks. Um, and uh, and the other, and the many other proteins uh, in gluten is called gliadin and glutenins and you know, kind of subtypes, but the main one is gliadin. Uh, and uh, if you were to take some uh, wheat flour and add some water to it, and then like now it's like dough, and you can bend it and, ma and manipulate it, and then pour a whole bunch of water over it, uh, and what, what have you got left? That's the gluten, okay? That, that's the gluten is what you have left. Uh, and, and, and gluten is, uh, can be stretched, it's knittable, you can roll it. It's the strength, it's the strength uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, these foods, the, the uh, donuts and the, the muffins, the strength in it is these chains of amino acids. Uh, and remember I said the Romans added the uh, CO2, uh, and then, uh, you know, we get a little lighter little uh, uh, breads that, that we started uh, uh, eating. What's celiac disease? You hear, you hear a lot about it. Uh, and uh, it has an incidence in the population about one in 133, let's say one uh, uh, in 100, and only 5% of these in this country are diagnosed. In Italy, 30 to 40%, and it's been difficult. But after I get done tonight, I hope you carry one thing away with you. I recommend that, frankly, part of every physical where you get your biometric checks, your blood checked, I personally think you, we all should have a blood check once a year. That's preventative. That's preventative. 
uh, and uh, that's how they do it in England. I think it's a good idea. Uh, that, that's prevention. Uh, and if you get a problem, I'd say every three months. There can be a difference of opinion about it, but I'm trying to keep you healthy the cheapest possible way. And if you act on it, uh, you will stay healthy. And I think it's a good thing uh, to remember. What are the symptoms of celiac disease? I tell you, you you'd be amazed. Oh, there are over 250 of them, yeah. What about clear cuts? See, some people have celiac disease, and it's due to these porous inflamed guts. That's what it's due to, okay? Uh, uh, and some people have celiac disease, and, and the symptoms are not in the gut. So you've got to keep that in mind. We'll just discuss that so you uh, understand that. And, uh, and remember, these are due to your Army and Navy and Marines, the lymphatic system, your defense system in the gut. That's doing this to you. Okay, that's doing this to the and real advanced cases, for example. You know what the average time to diagnosis in celiac disease and, and, or, or uh, gluten sensitivity, you know what the average time is? Five to ten years. That's sad. And in these books, are many a story of many a uh, patient who travel from doctor to doctor, clinic to clinic, and their symptoms were obvious. Uh, um, uh, the majority of these patients with advanced celiac disease uh, are very thin, can even be a child. Uh, you, you can make a diagnosis of uh, gluten sensitivity or, or uh, celiac disease in, in a child less than one year of age because parents at that age pay a lot of attention with the feed of the child. So the, the most diagnostic time is very young in early 20s. But there are people who've had it for 20 years. Uh, and let's go on with the symptoms, the obvious ones, which are not always obvious. Uh, you, I read stories in there about uh, a lady who, my gosh, how many providers she had seen. Abdominal pain, diarrhea, anemia, fainting, constipation, delayed puberty, diarrhea, dis, uh, discolored teeth, uh, distension, bloating, nausea, vomiting, weight loss, fatigue, gas, headache, joint pains, dementia, uh, seizures, osteoporosis, multiple fractures from osteoporosis, uh, uh, missed uh, uh, periods, uh, muscle cramps, reproductive problems, skin rashes, herpetiformis is one disease. It's almost a, a gluten disease in itself, separate from celiac disease, where they get these rashes all the body and they're constantly itching, they're constantly scratching. You gotta do gluten uh, the testing. Uh, fatty stools, abnormal spell, uh, smells, uh, skin rashes, uh, cold sores, uh, numbness, uh, neuropathy, vitamin and mineral deficiency. Remember I said 250 symptoms. It's, it, it can be very difficult to diagnose, but if, if you run uh, uh, gluten testing uh, as a screening test, I think we pick many of these uh, people up. Uh, and, uh, and what are the long-term conditions uh, this can cause? Cancer, higher cancer rates in, in people who have gluten intolerance. Yeah higher cancer rates, uh, especially if full-blown celiac disease, uh, a much higher rate of cancer. We have celiac, remember I said celiac disease, one in three, 1,300, but it's such a thing called gluten, gluten sensitivity, where they have nut symptoms every time, but now and then uh, they have a partially abnormal test, maybe no abnormal test, uh, uh, and uh, they'll have symptoms. Uh, but that's seven, time, seven times more common uh, than the incidence of uh, celiac disease, something to keep in mind. Uh, it's a very genetic disease. The odds of your uh, the immediate relatives, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, mother and fathers having it if you have full-blown disease uh, is something like one in 22. Grandparents, maybe one in 39. Uh, so that, keep that in mind. It's a highly genetic disease. Uh, Long-term like, conditions, intestinal cancer, infertility, uh, uh, anemia, uh, osteoporosis. There's a big one, osteoporosis. People with multiple fractures, you always should be tested for that because uh, if you uh, uh, break a hip, uh, death rates are very high. We lose 250,000 people a year from fractures related to osteoporosis. What a huge number. And a lot of those people have had a gluten problem. If they were gluten-free, uh, maybe they wouldn't have had those fractures. Something really important uh, to know. Type 1 diabetes is, uh, it, it, 
diabetics have an increased uh, rate of positive tests for gluten. Uh, thyroid problems, hyperthyroid, hypothyroid uh, can have abnormal uh, gluten tests. Parkinson's disease has been some cases related to that. Uh, and we mentioned the vitamin deficiency. Some people are addicted to gluten. Yes, they're addicted to bread. Uh, I need my comfort food. Uh, uh, I was just a minute ago actually in a donut shop attached to the studio, and I could see it in little children, how they, when, when mother said, uh, I need a, uh, uh, would you like a donut? The kids were screaming with joy. It makes them feel good. Remember what I said? Sugar hits the nucleus accumbens, it makes you feel great. But sugar is as addictive as cocaine. I know the subject. It, sugar is addictive as cocaine. Many people are addicted to their food. That's why when you look around you, I was just at a wedding in Kendallville recently, and, and what I saw, I almost ran out of the church. We got a real problem. We have a real problem uh, with eating the, eating the wrong food. This is not judgmental. I just have my eyes open. Uh, and it's a real problem. I didn't always know the subject. My dad had a Dell in New York. I've been through the same darn problems. But I know, this, I know the subject now. And, uh, and I'm not being judgmental, but we have to look at that because this is accompanied by a huge number of illnesses. Uh, and, uh, and, and from cancer to diabetes uh, to dementia, much higher rate of dementia, for example, and type 2 uh, diabetes, diabetics. Uh, so uh, a lot of people, are, sniffing number of people are addicted uh, to what they're eating because of the sugar and the exorphins. Endorphins, your own morphine. Exorphins are the morphine that come in from foods you're eating, like wheat. Remember I said five? Uh, uh, products from the proteins in wheat that act like uh, morphine, go to the nucleus of cubans. Oh, I feel great. It's my comfort food. Uh, and that's the reason you can't stop. You have one donut uh, and you can't stop because of fructose co uh, corn syrup and the exorphins uh, and you eat the whole darn thing. The insulin level doesn't go up uh, because of the fruct fructose corn syrup in it which goes straight to the liver. It doesn't raise the insulin level. You can eat a whole dozen of donuts, and you're still hungry, but you feel like you're in heaven. The only trouble is you're destroying your health. You're destroying uh, your health. They've checked it scientifically by giving naloxone. That's something we use to block. If we see somebody that's been overdosed on morphine come to the emergency room, we give them naloxone. That blocks the effect uh, of a narcotic. So they tested some patients, gave them naloxone, uh, and uh, found uh, that the, the, the uh, uh, morphine-like effect from the proteins of wheat don't have any effect. They've been blocked. So they've proven uh, this, uh, uh, mo this um, uh, they call it a gluteomorphine uh, from food. So uh, it, it's very interesting. And uh, so uh, wheat uh, can, uh, uh, multiple problems. First of all, through the amylopectin A, the, the endosperm, uh, uh, will go to the liver and cause fatty liver, and then we have the protein and the effects it has on the bowel that makes the holes in the bowel and inflames the bowel, uh, and, we, and the proteins go through there in our lymphatic system. Uh, our Army, Navy, uh, and Air Force attacks those proteins, uh, trying to defend the body, trying to defend the body, and that reaction uh, kills those villi, flattens them, destroys them, shortens them, and you get a leaky gut. What essence, which end up with is a, a leaky uh, uh, gut. Let's look at a f food pyramid today provided for us by the government. It's called My Plate now. It's not the pyramid anymore. It's called uh, My Plate, but a quarter of the plate uh, is wheat. Is 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 wheat. Uh, you can talk about it all you want, uh, but that is dangerous for us. The other one, uh, another quarter uh, uh, is meat, uh, and 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 fatty. And meat, uh, almost all meat has some fat in it. You, you can call it lean meat all you want. Uh, and uh, but a lot of it uh, has inflammatory factors in it. Uh, matter of fact, most uh, meat you're eating today, uh, it comes uh, out of a, a farm situation uh, uh, where it's full of arachnoidinic acid. 
a lot of fish today, 90% of the fish you're eating today, you know what's from the ocean? No way, it's from a farm pond. It's from a farm pond. Dirty water, carbon product, carbon products, remnants of uh, chickens, for example, chicken litter, they've put it in the pond because there's a lot of fat in it. They fatten up the fish and that's what you're eating. You always gotta ask in the restaurant, is this from the ocean or not? Because it has the omega-6s, the inflammatory uh, essential fatty acids in it which causes disease instead of omega-3, which is in fish uh, in, in the uh, uh, water, for example. And for example, if you wanna go gluten-free and you can't eat any wheat product, uh, you, you can't be eating the fish from a farm-fed pond because what did the fish eat? The fish ate corn, genetically modified corn, and you're gonna eat the fish. Well, uh, obviously, you're gonna react. You want the fish, you gotta have the fish from the ocean. The same with the, uh, uh, a steak you might wanna have or, or, or whatever. It, it can't it come from a corn-fed uh, cows like the like, uh, beef they feed them today. Uh, it has to be organically fed. They have to have the original uh, grasses and uh, something to remember if you're trying to be wheat free. And uh, so the, the uh, U.S. government's uh, plate, I, I, I don't agree with it. There's too much wheat on there and there's too much fatty uh, meat on it. And uh, so in celiac disease, we spoke about already you have the leaky gut and, uh, and the reaction of the antigens and we lose the minerals. It, it's the chemical zonulin, Z-O-N-U-L-I-N, which is the one that normally opens the pores to allow our vitamins and potassium uh, B12 uh, through into the gut. The problem is when we eat a lot of meat, this zonulin, there's a huge quantity of it in the gut and that's what opens multiple holes. That is really the reason uh, that this happens. And uh, so the gluten attacks these villi, flattens them, shortens them, and you have malabsorption. Uh, and uh, and uh, remember what I said? Uh, celiac disease, di delayed diagnosis, 10 years, uh, uh, commonly. Uh, so uh, what are the tests we could do uh, to diagnose it? It's, it? Like I said, it's my opinion, I think we need to increase uh, the amount of testing we do for it in a routine biometric, that's blood tests, that you, when you get your physical, sooner if you get a problem, uh, uh, it is to get a celiac panel. Now I can tell you in detail the names of these, these IgA, Emma, um, TTDG, but you don't have to remember that. You say, I want a, celi I want a, I want a gluten panel, a celiac panel. Uh, uh, that's, I think, the start of it. Uh, then, uh, if it's pretty clear as to what you have, genetic testing, which is a little more expensive, I think would be a good idea because of other family members. If this is in a genetic structure, uh, then other family members uh, may have this. And then what's considered the gold standard is the endoscopy. They put a scope down and take a biopsy. And, uh, and, 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 uh, but you have to keep in mind too, I mean, Low risk test, low risk test, but not risk less. I was listening to Sirius Satellite the other day and someone was describing they had that done and they perforate their gut. That's rare, very rare. And when you get a horrible disease, they get a clear diagnosis important. So endoscopy, I, I recommend it and go along with it. But do you remember it's not zero risk. The blood test is a zero risk deal. Discuss it with your doctor and, uh, and uh, and a gastroenterologist or, uh, and, and, and ask them what the risk is, what their experience uh, uh, is. But these blood tests, I think is important. Uh, and remember the symptoms, 250 symptoms. I just told you a few of them. Uh, and so what are the other diseases uh, that gluten uh, can cause? It can cause autoimmune diseases. Uh, and what uh, autoimmune uh, diseases? Uh, autoimmune uh, diseases, uh, 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 diseases uh, that are uh, caused by your Army, Navy, uh, and Air Force reacting uh, to uh, uh, what you're eating or what's traveling in your body and attacks the lymphatic system, att attacks it and causes an illness. Yeah, it's uh, destroying itself. Your body is destroying itself and it can be extremely serious extremely serious. And one of these stories in these books uh, I was reading is very interesting. Uh, the, some of the original great books written of this came out of Australia, came out of Australia maybe 50 years ago. Uh, and there 
in there uh, was a, a story of a, a, do a doctor the, the, in the man writing the book, actually, uh, I think it, it was uh, Dr. Braley, visited uh, uh, the office of his doctor in Australia, and he had 100 pictures on, the, on his wall in the office, and they were all people who had been diagnosed with lupus. We've all heard of uh, uh, lupus. Most of the time we don't know the reason uh, people have it, but it's an autoimmune disease. Your own immune system is trying to destroy your body. It comes from brain changes, from paralysis to heart trouble to, I mean, it's really a, a butterfly rash. That, that's one of the things that, that, that it does. And these 100 people, he had cured with a gluten-free diet. My hat off to this uh, doctor. Yeah, 100 pictures on there. Uh, and uh, and uh, un. Uh, believable. So that's one of the illnesses that can be uh, autoimmune disease. Rheumatoid arthritis patients, a uh, good 48% have a positive gluten test. Many times those tests aren't run. So anybody out there who's got rheumatoid arthritis, uh, get them a gluten test done, maybe even test on biopsy, whatever, whatever you need to make a diagnosis because they're gluten-free. Maybe you can get rid of this very serious disease. And believe me, as a neurosurgeon, I have seen it uh, from, uh, you know, little old swollen, deformed hands to, to uh, uh, terrible condition uh, uh, for the patient. Uh, and uh, Crohn's disease, a uh, disease involving all the layers of your small bowel, uh, also run a pretty high rate uh, of abnormal gluten tests. So, uh, and, and that can really disable somebody. Uh, needing multiple surgeries, uh, for example. Sometimes they'll perforate uh, the bowel, develop fistulas, uh, and uh, so, uh, because it involves all the layers of the bowel uh, versus irritable bowel, where the bowel is very irritable, you don't find much, but they have found increased rate of positive uh, gluten tests in them also. So you have somebody with an uh, irritable bowel, constantly get bowel complaints, but you never find anything, and no one knows for certain what it's due to, R run the gluten test. Run it for Crohn's disease. Frankly, I think for any persistent abdominal disease, you've got to run the darn thing. Uh, but, uh, and it's not always done. It's shameful because these people really suffer. They uh, really suffer. I think type, one, type 2 diabetics, they both you, you checked. I think the rate of type 2 diabetes in this community is running one in three people in my experience in my practice, and I think it's heading to one in two. Remember I spoke about the wedding and the, and the size of the people? I think they're all gonna be, I bet they all have fatty liver disease. I bet they all got fatty liver disease. I bet they're all heading to type two diabetes. Uh, if you're overweight, get, get, get checked. And the, to find or see if you get type two diabetes, I tell you the test to get. Not just the ABA1C where they, where there's a pro, where the hemoglobin, where, which, uh, you know, the hemoglobin cells die about 60, 90 days. Uh, so it, it, that's a protein. If it picks up sugar, it's called HbA1c test, okay? But as some people, if that's elevated, you're, you're diabetic, okay? But some people uh, will, for f five, 10 years, uh, have uh, elevated serum insulin, serum insulin. If you get a cell here, and, you, and these are the receptors, and you're trying to get sugar, uh, in there and oxygen for ATP, your energy molecule, uh, but the insulin can't open these doors because uh, they're closed uh, with fat in your, with fat in your uh, blood. The insulin level keeps on rising, trying to push it in, trying to, and it gets the job done. Sugar may be normal, but the insulin level is up. So you could diagnose somebody with prediabetes much, much earlier. It's a glucose tolerance test. Check the sugar and the serum insulin. It's not done much today. It's a mistake. That impressed me so much, I just finished writing a book on that subject. It'll be out six weeks. It's that important because we could prevent a tremendous number of cases of type 2 diabetes if we diagnose people early. That's the reason I can't stress enough. Get your biometrics checked so we can catch any 
diabetes, type 2 diabetes you may be getting with its complications of blindness and strokes and amputations and renal transplants and all this stuff you can avoid by early testing. Then we can tell you to, to eat a little bit different food. I'm not even sure you need to count calories as long as you eat the right food. That'll go away. It can even be seen in normal weighted people. Normal weighted people, 25% of metabolic syndrome, which is a pre-stage of a type 2 diabetes, yes, of normal weight. So what I tell you? Get your biometrics checked. Get your biometrics. Know what your blood figures are. They always say, you are what you eat. I say, you are what your biometric tests show. Huh. Which is reflected, of course, by what you eat. By uh, what you eat. Uh, th thyroid disease is some of it hypo or hyper related uh, to uh, uh, glutens because there's an autoimmune reaction uh, to your thyroid gland. Hyper or hypo. I mentioned lupus already. And, uh, and the, pyro the parathyroid gland here is a can also be attacked uh, by the glutens, throwing your calcium off to it. It can be very dangerous. It can cause deaths. And uh, Oral, oral canker sores, for example, I know I get canker a lot. I always thought it was due to stress. I noticed I've had less since I switched to the wellness job from neurosurgery. Maybe it was stress, but it's funny. My son gets them too, and a lot. I mean, he gets them a lot. You, don't you kind of wonder maybe we ought to have our, uh, our uh, gluten checked? I'm going to have it done. I'm going to talk to him about it. It may not, it may not be stress. Could we that we're uh, gluten sensitive? We don't have celiac disease, but we're sensitive. Make you wonder. I have another daughter who's got a few symptoms. You kind of, kind of wonder. Remember how I said it's high genetic incidence. I think it's very important. Uh, and we talked about this, this herpetiformis rash where people are itching constantly and they have red splotches all over. And, and, uh, and uh, it's almost a separate disease from cellular disease. They, they, they cut gluten out of their life. It goes away. It clears up two weeks. Two weeks. So it's, it's, it's really critical. Uh, neuropathy, nephthopathy, uh, kidneys, nerves, uh, uh, diseases can be due to uh, gluten problems. Thrombocytopenia, like I said, I, I could list many more illnesses uh, caused uh, by gluten problems, and that's the reason we can't discuss every one of those, but that's the reason I say, I think I, I, I get it checked. If you get any kind of a problem, I, I, I think it's, go it's good uh, 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 to know. Uh, and, and we already mentioned uh, cancer, of course, uh, significantly higher incidence of cancer in people who have gluten problems. And, and, and part of the reason uh, is because of those opioids that we talked about that, that are in the gluten proteins that act, act like morphine. Uh, people for increased uh, addictions, for example, drug problems have higher cancer rates. And, and, it, could, and it could be due to uh, these type of uh, uh, proteins. Uh, they're not sure whether it's direct action on the cells themselves or whether this is a related uh, to uh, effect on the brain activity, uh, affecting your immunity response. Remember ACTH is made there, the, the, the hormone that stimulates the adrenal gland. Uh, maybe uh, uh, it's, it's a response to the brain effect. Uh, so these proteins act like narcotics. There's about, about five of them on there, uh, act like a morphine effect. Uh, and we spoke about celiac sensitivity. Remember, seven times, seven times more common uh, than celiac disease, uh, and they're not quite as sick, okay? Uh, uh, they don't have as many bowel perforations, uh, and, uh, but they'll have some of the same symptoms as celiac disease. They go away, clear up, don't show up for a year, and they're back. Uh, and so it's worthwhile, and the same, similar symptoms. If you were to go uh, uh, in, uh, in people with celiac disease, yeah, about half are, are underweight, okay? And some come out just totally emaciated, totally emaciated. No one diagnosed them, hard to understand at this stage, but, but uh, uh, like, like I mentioned, I, I think the problems with gluten uh, uh, was not taught much in the medical school years ago, and the information still isn't out there, so you must participate in your health care. Maybe even ask for the test. You think, you know, Doc, I, I kind of wonder if I don't have some reaction uh, to uh, the gluten. Many patients figure this out uh, uh, on themselves. I would say five years ago, I didn't know a lot about this. 
I didn't know a lot about this. Um, and now if you go decide, well, three things, benefits you would have to cut out wheat. Number one, you get celiac disease. Uh, you can eliminate disease, but you gotta get, get some education there. You, you gotta, I can discuss this all tonight, you gotta read some of these books because if you have full-blown celiac disease, you, you can't eat any of it. I don't mean even a, a, a tiny bit, one grain of it, and you can have a major reaction. Incidentally, stress sometimes, uh, you've had no problems, you've, you've, you've had a, a problem all along but have very few symptoms, and you can involve some st real stressful thing, that can bring out full-blown celiac disease and then gets missed uh, because you had no previous history. Keep that in mind too. One major stressful event, you can get a full-blown full -blown, uh, disease. But if you get celiac disease, you get to know what foods do it. And I, there are tables and tables. There are a lot of gluten-free products today. Half the people who have celiac disease are overweight. Yeah, they're, they're actually obese, about half of them uh, because they, Comfort food, okay, comfort food. They're eating wheat products on the high, high calorie, a lot of sugar. Uh, they're addicted and they're eating like anything, you know, a dozen donuts and, and, uh, and, and uh, overweight. Uh, but Dr. William Davis's book on wheat belly, cardiologist, uh, uh, says in his book, and I've seen it too, if you cut out wheat and some, and uh, so if you have celiac disease, you can't eat any of it. If you're gluten sensitive, you can eat some occasionally, you gotta see if you get away or not, you gotta deal with your doctor on that. So you gotta read some of these books and find out every type of food uh, that might have some, some uh, gluten in it. It's not easy, it'll take a little while, but you'll feel so much better uh, that it's really worth it. And I'll discuss some of the foods that are fairly safe. Uh, uh, and that's kind of interesting in itself. Dr. Davis says a lot of the people are gluten-free, and suppose you're gluten, uh, you have celiac disease, or you're gluten sensitive, or you just got a weight problem because you eat t uh, too much wheat. Uh, three things can happen. If you eat no uh, gluten at all, you can have weight loss. He found 50 pound weight loss in f three, four, five months, common, dime a dozen. So we can use it to get rid of celiac disease. You can use it to get rid of gluten sensitivity. But thirdly, you can use it as a weight loss program. Yeah. You want to lose weight, you don't have any of these illnesses, cut out wheat. You know, it doesn't have to be 100% if you don't have these diseases. Just cut the wheat out. You know what's going to happen? If you got a pot, you got a beer belly, you got a pot, you got a belly. Remember beer, it's got wheat in it. And, uh, and uh, you can lose weight like that. I've had patients do it. Type 2 diabetics, I said, just cut out wheat, do nothing else. 50 pounds gone. The type 2 diabetes, gone. I took pictures of them. My other cell phone is full of pictures of people. And, uh, and uh, to this day, I remember a year ago, uh, really a pretty girl, except big old pot belly, type two, type two diabetic. And, uh, and I gave a little talk on this in the office, one talk, that's unusual, one talk in the office, and I asked her permission to take a picture. I took a picture. She comes back six months later, the belly is gone, looks like a movie star, type two diabetes, I'll feed her Zane, it's gone. A lot of people don't realize type 2 diabetes uh, is a curable disease. People think, oh, it's not curable. My whole family's got it. Well, let me tell you a secret. The whole family's eating the same wrong food, the mad, sad, toxic American diet. It's not genetics. Not genetics. You're all eating the same food. Yeah, when I was working out the other day, some guy was trying to tell me this. Oh, my whole family's got it. I'll never get rid of it. I, I don't, people can disagree with me on this, but doctors might. But I, I tell you, I've had so many patients get rid of the type 2 diabetes from eating the right food. And, uh, and Dr. Uh, Dean Ornish and Dr. Esseltine and Dr. Furman and Dr. Bernard, they all agree with that. They all agree with that. Uh, but and, uh, but, but not, ev not everyone does. We've seen it. Franklin House, 30 years they've been doing this. Yet, it's not generally known in the community. Sad to say. Type 2 diabetes, 90% of the time you can get rid of it. 60 days if you follow a strict and nutrient-dense way of eating, which I'm going to teach you here in a minute. Uh, and uh, so uh, it can be used as a weight loss program. You can use it to get rid of celiac disease and all the other symptoms and illnesses and lupus. You, and all the thing I mentioned, you ought to give it a shot. Parkinson's disease occasionally is due to gluten problems. So you give it a shot. And uh, 
it, it, in essence, uh, we talked about gluten sens sensitivity, uh, and, uh, and sometimes people too, I meant to mention, they'll have memory problems from eating too much, too much wheat. What are some safe foods? Let's go down the line a little bit here. Uh, incidentally, the Food and Drug Administration uh, does have to label foods, some foods they label gluten-free or not. But the U.S. Department of Agriculture doesn't have to do it, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't have to label it. You don't know whether there's gluten in there or not. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, but what are some naturally grown foods that, that are safe? Uh, and but check them too. But you know, ask your doctor's advice, read it in a book, website, whatever. There are many websites, incidentally. Fruits in general are safe, vegetables are safe. Uh, in this book I was reading here, it says meats are safe. But I tell you, I, I can't imagine that beef that has been fed, been, uh, fed corn and, and wheat products, which most of them are, most of them are not, not organic, can be safe. What you eat is what that animal ate. I, I, I don't think that's correct, but it should be checked. Uh, fish, for example, you know, they mentioned that too. Fish is safe. Fish can't be safe from a farm pond. What did, they, what did that fish eat? Wheat products. It, it corn, carbon products. Uh, it, fish from the ocean. I would agree. I think they would be safe. Uh, same with poultry. Same thing. Depends how it's uh, fed. Uh, and nuts are safe. Seeds and, and beans. I mean, what is that? Uh, that's a plant-based diet. What I generally teach, 80% plant Based diet, 20% lean meat. That's what I teach, Dr. Furman. That's what he teaches. Uh, uh, and and uh, so uh, you're going to lose weight. You're going to look very healthy and probably live to be 100 uh, because your blood sugar is down and can't attach to the proteins that make the ages, which, which is what causes you to look old and get old uh, sooner, is the deposit of the ages in your joints, in your skin. Uh, and uh, a very healthy diet. Uh, you switch to a nutrient-dense diet and and then check out this meat product thing a bit and see what's uh, safe there. So this w really wouldn't uh, be very hard. And, uh, but I want you to read more about it so you understand how you got to do with the kitchen. You can't have any, you got to label the food in the kitchen, gluten, this, this, so we have different people eating differently in the house. There can't be any cross-contamination. The kitchen has to be dealt with differently. Even a kernel and a spoon could cause you an attack. So you, you got to read on this so you fully understand uh, what uh, if you have full-blown celiac disease, you need to talk to your specialist about it, but also do a lot of reading. Uh, participate in your health care. Look at websites. Uh, uh, read uh, uh, books. But, but I don't want you to be pessimistic because gluten-free, I mean, what did I label here? I mean, it, it, it's, it's a way of eating, not a diet. It's a way of eating. Did I ask you to count calories? No. Uh, I, I didn't ask you to count calories or... or uh, uh, anything uh, like that. Remember I said also that uh, irritable bowel is, is part of this and if you, uh, a lot of, uh, significant number of people just have irritable bowel from eating gluten products. So if you say you go semi-gluten free, you might get rid of your uh, irritable bowel. But celiac disease, you got to get rid of it all. And, uh, and other things that seem to say okay is uh, uh, chocolates and uh, uh, what are some free grains? You will need some grains. If you go to Sweden, where there's a much higher rate uh, uh, of celiac di uh, disease, uh, they'll at, at, like McDonald's, for example, uh, they will have gluten-free bread available for you. I don't see it around here much, but I'm sure it's coming. Uh, what, what are good grains? Buckwheat, tapioca, corn, uh, rice, uh, for example, uh, of, of flax, millet, uh, nut flavors, uh, quinoa, the old Indian uh, wheat where they went to war with little uh, quinoa uh, balls, uh, don't have any uh, gluten in them. I like for people who want to eat different bread to have Ezekiel bread, but Ezekiel bread I found out has gluten in it. But if you don't have a gluten problem, Ezekiel bread has sprouts and it doesn't raise the blood sugar. Very good bread to eat, but if you get a gluten problem, that's not your bread. But I threw that out there because a lot of people, they want to a bread that doesn't raise the blood sugar quickly. <laughs> Ezekiel bread, like a chapter in the Bible, is in the frozen section of any, any market. Uh, and uh, alcohol, of course, has gluten in it uh, uh, and uh, has similar effect to gluten. Al alcohol, yeah, because, and, uh, and uh, 
uh, because of gluten in it. Most alcoholics, people who drink a lot, will test positive for gluten, incidentally. Yeah, they test positive for that. Uh, and uh, remember what I mentioned about osteoporosis, uh, uh, especially to avoid that. Uh, females past age 60 have a high rate. Most of the osteoporosis in females, 80%. Uh, and, 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 uh, and very serious, so to, to be checked for that, I think is um, uh, uh, important. Uh, and remember, I already uh, mentioned the HbA1c test, that, that's called AGES, where the sugar attaches to the hemoglobin thing, but, but you can use HbA1c, uh, what's a test for aging? That's a good test, actually, yeah, be, because it combines the sugar and the uh, protein in the, in, in the uh, blood, uh, and if your uh, HbA1c uh, uh, is quite low, you're probably going to live a long time. If it's quite high, that means the sugary products uh, have been in your bloodstream. Remember, it goes to the liver, causes insulin resistance, makes a small LDL which barrows into your blood vessel and causes arteriosclerosis. The large L, uh, LDL in your blood floats. It's, it's not harmful. You need to know what your low-density LDL uh, uh, is. And some uh, brain disorders are caused, indeed, by gluten. Some forms of ataxia, severe unsteadiness, uh, are caused uh, uh, by gluten uh, products, some dementia, some uh, memory loss. Type 2 diabetics have a much higher rate uh, of uh, uh, dementia because of ages. And, and people with arthritis and need hip replacements and knee replacements is due to the sugar attached to the proteins and deposited in the joints. That's the cause of it. It's not the weight. Uh, it's the inflammation caused uh, by these foods. So let's summarize this whole thing. A little bit complex, but I think kind of interesting. Uh, and remember, gluten is a, is a protein f found uh, largely in wheat, but, but uh, you know, barley uh, and, and oats uh, generally are contaminated with wheat. So although it's another wheat, uh, oats don't work out generally too uh, 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 good uh, either. Get, get your blood test. Get your biometric test. And that's not just for the gluten. You know, have it uh, uh, check for the serum insulin to see if you're pre-diabetic. And normal weight means nothing. 20%, 15% of normal weight people have fatty liver in this country, and they're heading for a big time trouble. They get metabolic syndrome, high blood pressure, uh, and, uh, and, and vascular disease, and uh, pre-diabetic. Uh, and if I'm for prevention. I'm Dr. Prevention and uh, Dr. Wellness. This is what I'm for. So get your test done, even as nobody suggested. Be active and participate uh, in your own uh, uh, health care. And you can avoid a, lo a lot of these uh, illnesses. And uh, remember I said only 5% of the people who have a gluten problem in this country have been diagnosed. Italy, 30, 40%, Australia, probably 80%. That's where the original books came from to, uh, describing. Occasionally you might think, is this overdiagnosed? Well, uh, after reading all this and, and, and my learning about this, uh, I'm not convinced of that. I, I think the reason people think it's overdiagnosed, it's been so underdiagnosed uh, that, that the rate is going up, uh, and I, I think that's really the reason. So thanks for <laughs> listening to me. It's been a lot of fun for me. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, I next watch some of our other shows. I'm, I'm a doctor wellness, and uh, I've probably done 150 TV shows all on wellness, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get you well. Uh, people are very interested in that, and I encourage you to participate in your health care. Uh, we, we love you all. Uh, namaste. Come to some of my other lectures. Send me a book. I'll meet you at Starbucks. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>